Hey, so I just wanna do a quick video here. My name is TD Storm and I run an online writing school and coach storytellers of all stripes. I see a lot of manuscripts, both in my work doing novel length beta reads and in the many classes I've taught in which I've critiqued lots of short stories and chapters and scenes of longer form stories. And there are a few things that crop up over and over again. So I just wanna identify some of the most common issues I see. When I was in college, I was on a rowing team and there was this guy who was a few years younger than me. We'll call him Fred. I think he was a freshman when I was a senior, so I didn't really know him all that well or interact with him much. The freshmen are essentially a different team. They have a different coach and different practice times, so you don't see them much if you're on the varsity team. But I heard via some other guys on the team that he, they had labeled him a humor vacuum because he was really awkward. He'd like walk in in a conversation others were having and he'd start laughing at their banter right away and all the humor would just suddenly drain from the room. I thought this was a bit cruel to label anyone with such terms, but I did finally interact with him a few times and it was kind of true. He was a bit like Jared from Silicon Valley, but without the redeeming moral conscience. So what does this have to do with anything? When I'm reading a story, there are a few things that just seem to vacuum the momentum right out of the story. They're not quite as identifiable as Fred, who is like six foot eight and therefore very noticeable, but they have a very similar effect on the story joy, we'll call it. So what are those things? This isn't a definitive list. There is no definitive list, but these are some of the things that I've seen most common issues in the past year or so. And the first is that there's no desire track for the protagonist, or there's a very weak desire track. That is to say, the hero of the story doesn't seem to want anything. There's no goal. John Truby says, desire is the driving force of the story, the line from which everything else hangs. Everyone gets on the train with the hero and they all go after the goal together. Now, if you're writing a novel, it's fair to argue that the novel's main desire track shouldn't be revealed until page 20 or 30 or 40 or something. But that doesn't mean that in your opening scenes there should be no desire at all. There should be. Robert Olin Butler says that the element missing from virtually every student manuscript I've seen has to do with the phenomenon of desire. And he's totally right. I see this over and over again. The second thing I see a lot of goes hand in hand with the first problem. It's beginning with boring exposition. Dumping backstory and world building on us right away and not giving us any proverbial train to ride. Information in and of itself cannot compete with narrative. Give us a story first, provide context, and then the reader will see how the information is important for us to know. Without that context, we're not sure if the information is important, or as my father-in-law likes to say, is this gonna be on the test? Imagine taking like a rail car tour of an abandoned mine, one they've obviously made some safety upgrades to. What would be the most captivating way for the tour guide to start? By giving you a 30 minute lecture on the history of the mine, or by giving you a few quick safety guidelines and then plunging you into the depths until you're immersed in total darkness and silence and then flicking on a weak headlamp and telling you a tidbit of the mine's history. Before you give us information, plunge us into the story first. Next thing, flat on the nose dialogue. This is dialogue in which the speakers are conveying information and nothing more. If your dialogue reads like an interview or if it is just a way to deliver information, then it may be problematic. But if there is a layer to the communication, which isn't being stated, but that exists nonetheless, readers have fun searching for that below the surface layer. See, when people speak, and especially in conflict situations, they don't often state how they're feeling. There's this great Key and Peele skit about a school bully. He sees this kid on the steps reading and he goes over and he slaps the book out of his hand. And the reader says to him, hey, why you gotta pick on me, man? And the bully's response is this. Because I'm not doing very well at school. I'm reading at a third grade level. I really don't wanna get left back. So when I see somebody reading for fun, it makes me feel that much more stupid. And then I get mad. So this just goes to show you how absurd it is when people do state how they're feeling. But it's also the behind the scenes look at what the writer of the scene needs to know. What are your characters feeling? They can convey information via dialogue, but that can't be the only thing they do. They should also at least imply some of their desires. And finally, one of the things I see a lot of is people writing too much summary and not enough scene. That is, people failing to dramatize situations that could be full of tension and drama. Scenes immerse us in the story. They enact desires, and they allow us to feel vicariously and also ally us with characters. I've written recently on scenes versus summary, using a scene from Frederick Bachman's A Man Called Ove as an example. Check it out at stormwritingschool.com blog. And if you want to know more about how not to be a story momentum vacuum, then check out my online course on story momentum at stormwritingschool.com. Thanks for watching and keep writing.